Okay, that's a wrap for the thumbnail. What's up guys, I'm Safi and welcome to the channel. So today we're gonna to talk about the 85 1.8 and maybe talk a little bit about all the new cameras that are coming out. Maybe that'll interest you, but let's start off with showing some video samples, running the intro and talking about the photography as well as comparing this lens to the G Master version, which is much more expensive. So let's get right into it, run the intro and Hope you enjoyed that footage and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so if I do post something you guys can watch it but maybe not maybe don't do that but is this lens for you is this a portrait lens is it a video lens is it good for both is it good for one I think that if you're gonna have three lenses or a few lenses in your kit you should have a wide lens a middle ground lens maybe a 24 to 70 or a 50 nifty and a 85 or a 70 to 200. Why? Because for me, low light is important. I do a lot of run and gun shooting. Even this condition right here is very low light, even though I have lights every, what am I talking about? This is not a low light. I think that it earned itself, it paid for itself. From the music videos and from the photos that I've taken, it has returned its money back within two to three months. Now that is pretty slow for me because of COVID-19, but if I could recommend a few lenses to you guys, and if you're on the fence about what lenses to buy, maybe that's why you're here in this video, is because you're not really sure how much money to spend or if you even need lenses. To be honest, when I first started shooting, I went and bought the Sony a7R 3 with the 55 Zeiss 1.8. I shot all my photos and all my videos with the 55 1.8. It was a great low light, so I could get good night and daytime photo and video. So maybe that's a good place for you to start. A 50 millimeter, which doesn't distort the face. It's great for portraits. And honestly, the Zeiss lenses have amazing image quality and sharpness. It is on the a more expensive side compared to Sigma or some other Sony E-mount lenses that are 50 millimeters, but I really enjoyed my Zeiss 55 1.8. But this video is not about the 55 1.8. It is about the 85 1.8. If you're looking for my opinion, I think it's definitely worth it. And do I think the 85 G Master is worth that extra $1,000? No. I think this gets the job done and it looks great. What I caught myself using this for is video but most of the time I'm using the 24 and using the APS-C mode to jump between the 24 to the 33 and the 55 to the 80 or 75 range. Because with the Sony a7R 3 you can customize a button and just press it and get more versatility out of your lenses. So most of the time it's you know music videos and I don't really wanna switch lenses so I don't want the dust to go inside and then I'll have a dust floating somewhere in the camera or in the lens when you have a dust spot. I really, really hate that. So I try to keep my lenses on my camera body as much as possible. I try not to take it out as often. And that's one of the reasons why I stick to using one lens throughout a shoot, which it's convenient, but I wouldn't recommend it. Try to be as creative as possible with your lenses because each millimeter or each uh, lens option is a tool. 
and each one of them portray a different emotion. Um, that's up to you and your interpretation of how you want to use your lenses. But I think the most versatile lens is the 50 millimeter, especially for beginners. But since you're here to hear more about the 85, let's talk about that. As far as how much it's priced at, it's a great deal. It, it's sharp, it looks great. I love the colors that come out of it, the contrast, and just the overall use that I've put into it and the return it has given me into my business. I have definitely, definitely used this lens. It has not been sitting on the shelf. It has not been in my backpack. It has been riding my camera when I do fo photos and as well as this recent mu music video that I did that has not been released yet, which I'm looking forward to. Oh my God, I'm ranting. Anyways. What else can someone really say about a lens? Um, I wanted to just share those clips with you guys, as well as the photos, because that says most of it, you know? My words compared to my content, they're two different things. I think that you watched my video and you watched the photos that I posted up. That should give you more of an indication of wanting to get this lens or not. But let's talk about cameras. Um, I pre-ordered the Sony a7S 3 and I also saved up a little bit of money to buy the FX9, which I'm really excited about. Um, I want to start making short films and movies, but it's kind of it's kind of scary because you know it's not about the camera gear, it's not about your lens options, it's not about any of those things. It really comes down to your creativity. So sometimes I think maybe I'm in a creative rut. So I look for gear to get myself out of it. But if you're really ready and you really have that money, I think you should make the investment because that is going to come back to you. Uh, it's going to add more versatility and tools in your toolbox for you to get the shot that other people are not getting because they're not making that investment. You investing in your business is a huge deal. And just like anything else, a student loan you know, some people go and get half a million dollar student loans to become a dentist or a doctor or a brain surgeon. Just like you, when you're making investments into your gear. So I think it's a phenomenal thing. I think it's a beautiful thing that someone has passion and they buy the gear that they need, that they need, um, even that they want, but that it's being used. And I think you're going to use this. It's not going to sit in your backpack, maybe like the 70 to 200, unless you're a bird photographer or you're shooting sports from far away. Um, I really use the 24 millimeter a lot and the 55 a lot. I use this quite often, but not as much as those two lenses. Well, actually, I guess that's it for the lens, you know? The work speaks for itself, and if you like my work, that's definitely possible to get my images and my video with this lens, because I did it, so why can't you? Um, obviously, you're going to have your own style and your way of shooting, but let's talk about camera bodies. Um, obviously, this video is not about camera bodies, so if you are done with the lens, you can just sign off and hit the subscribe button on your way out, please. But if you want to talk cameras with me, let's talk about cameras a little bit because I pre-ordered the Sony a7S III, which I'm really excited about. Um, I also took a loan to buy the FX9 because I really want to open my avenues to broadcasting just a higher level production, take it more seriously. And I was thinking to myself, you know, cognitive dissonance, trying to convince myself that it's a good option in life because it's my option A, it's my dream to shoot a documentary or shoot a film, make something that can change the world in any way, in a positive way, tell the stories that I really want to tell. And that's what it's about, right? It's the tools that help you tell the stories that you really want to share with the people around you, the people that you really care about. So the FX9 looked so amazing, you know, obviously it has some things that I don't like about it, but I am wed. I'm married to the Sony system. I have everything Sony, and me switching to the C300 Mark III with 4K 120, great dynamic range, uh, 
the the new chips that they have inside of them that gives it great low light uh, capabilities, which is awesome, low noise. And Gerald and Dunn, most of the time when I watch his videos, I buy everything that he talks about. But he said that that was his favorite camera and he explained how the noise is much better on the C300 Mark III compared to the C500 Mark II, even though there's a $6,000 difference in price. Obviously, one has a full frame 5.9K and the other one is a Super 35. Um, you know, it's, it's different. It's for different cases. Um, what am I talking about? Oh yeah, we're talking about cameras. There's also the Red Dragon Komodo, which has, it's not like the traditional red cameras where you have to buy all these accessories for it to work. It can actually work straight out of camera. Uh, you can also put, run it on a gimbal and apparently it has autofocus. I saw a few clips of it being released recently and it looks so good. However, it has RF glass, which I don't want to invest in new glass, but I was actually considering getting that instead of the FX9, but no, I'm gonna stick to the FX9. I'm gonna use this A7S III as my B camera and use the A7R III as my photography camera. But comment down below, are you a Blackmagic G2 Pro fan? Are you a, you know, are you a Sony fan? Are you a R5 fan? All of them are great cameras and we have too many choices, which is like crazy, you know? first world problems, but I think that now more than ever, people are really appreciating content creating and it's becoming more of a avenue to make a living off of. YouTube is here, people wanna advertise on the media. Everyone is becoming more aware of how much proper marketing and advertising can do for their business. Artists wanna make music videos, now more than ever, I think content creators are needed. So if you are wondering about getting into making videos or taking photos professionally, I think now is the best time to get into it. Get into it now, get the best camera, get the good lens, you know, R6, Sony, um, Sony a7 III, Sony a7R III, Sony a7R IV. All these cameras are really good. What are we? I'm just ranting. All right, so that's the end of the review for the Sony 85 1.8. And thank you for listening to me about cameras. I love talking about cameras. Tell me in the comments down below what camera you wanna buy if you had the money. And obviously we don't need cameras and all these gear to make the content that we want. Make with what you have. And whenever you're ready and you feel like you want to do something, like invest in your business, you should totally do it. Don't listen to all those people that put doubt in your heart. This is a real business. More than ever in 2020, people are noticing the value of content creators. And you can make a real good living off of owning a camera and investing in this business. Not to mention you can write it off in taxes. So don't be afraid of investing into gear. It's, it's a good thing. It's not a shoe. It's not a something that doesn't put value into you as a person. This is definitely value. It's an asset. It's not luxury spending. You can definitely make money off this gear and you can always sell these back because lenses depreciate less and you can sell lenses much efficiently than a camera body. So lenses are always a good option. Thank you. Hit that bell icon and subscribe. Hope to see you soon, guys, and be safe.